All right, let's do it. We've yeah. made the homies wait long enough. Let's do it. Your top five wide receivers of 2022 going into the year. Yeah, right. You reserve, the year. you reserve the right to change your mind during the year. Well, yeah, I'm just well, I'm going into the year. And, you <laughs> yeah. know, again, just like the quarterbacks, it's a little bit like, hey, uh, you know, growth. It's one year one into year two. Yep. You play all that into it. So number five for me is going to be Cooper Cup right off the bat. Yes, Cooper Cup is phenomenal, right? He's definitely a top five receiver in football. He gets disrespected in a lot of ways. People will probably think I'm disrespecting him by making him number five. Well, that's the funny thing. If you said this last year, people would be like, what? Cooper yeah. Cup's top five, right. and now you're going to say it, and they're going to go, what? He's not number one or I two know, right. or three? Yep. He's not number one or number two or number three for me. No, he's not. You know, he's – Really in the conversation for maybe the most complete receiver as far as there's no weakness to his football game. There's none. There's no one area you can look at and go, oh, wow, he doesn't do that well. He's bigger than you think. He's bigger than you think. Exactly right. So 50-50 balls, back shoulder balls, catching the ball over the middle in traffic. It's all really good. The route running is up there of the Devontae Adams level type route running. It's every bit as good as that. All right. So he's special with all that type of stuff. He's smart as hell. We know his hands are phenomenal. And then to me, what puts him in the top five over some other guys that, you know, maybe have a little more physical ability or, you know, pure and physical ability. But this guy has all the other stuff we talked about. And maybe I'm not phrasing this quite the right way. As Cooper Cup has more physical ability than he's given credit for. That's the Got one it. thing, again, that just constantly, like going back and watching him. 10 days ago and then even as you came in today the office I said hey I'm just sitting here watching some highlights and writing a few other notes down just things like that the physical ability is real I mean I, I you know again this is not just some you know white system wide receiver where we have to devise seven formations and and crisscross receivers to get my guy open for a six yard gain no I mean oh it's a big moment in the Super Bowl it's a fourth down reverse to Cooper Cup oh it's a big moment against the Bucks. Go deep on a post route and beat everybody with your speed for a huge game. Oh, it's a big move moment against the 49ers. Throw him a screen and he'll break tackles and run upfield and get 15 or 20 yards. So it's not like he's just a refined receiver. He does not get enough uh, credit in my for in my you know opinion sure. for the pure physical raw ability and the size like you're talking about that's really a skill. Yeah, what is the size? Do we know the exact uh well, I'm going to say 6'2 and change. It might six be 6'3. Six three. It might even be 6'3. If Pete, you want me to look it up or you want to look it up? All Pete's, right. Pete's on it right now. He he led the NFL last year with 1947 yards. The next closest was Justin Jefferson with 1600. 62208. Six, yeah. 62. Yeah. Six, I mean two. that's big. I mean I think some people would think Cooper Cup under six feet. Yeah, it's a big six two too. Like to where you know it's it's broad shoulders, it's long arms, it's pretty thick legs and butt. Like it's not just like, yeah, it's not some jitter bug, and you know he's not just some skinny skinny guy. I mean it, it's it's real. It really is. And 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 you know, again, I think he's been dancing around the top five ish. The last few years, tennis in that conversation, but you know, too, just like Matthew Stafford a little bit, but vice versa here. He needed a quarterback to kind of show all the things he can do. You know, again, Sean McVay and company can only dial up so many four-yard flat routes for Cooper Cup and the Jared Goff offense. Yeah. So now he gets to show the whole, you know, variety of route running ability that he has with him. And I think he showed his ass last year and showed you how damn good he is. In 2020, he was under 1,000 yards. Yeah. Did have a 1,000-yard season in 2019, but nothing compared to what he did last year at uh, 1,900. So he led the league in receiving uh, yards and reception. We'll talk a little bit about who you think could uh, challenge him maybe maybe this year, but he's number five on your list yeah. in 2022. Who's number four? Number four is Justin Jefferson, all right? Minnesota Vikings. Jefferson, in a lot of ways, a lot like Cooper Cup. It's a complete wide receiver. It really is. Route running is special, again, just like Cooper Cup. It's up there in the Devontae Adams that, that, you know, these guys are special that way. But to me where, like, Justin Jefferson separates himself is, you know, Jefferson, you can put him on the outside and people play him one-on-one and he will run by you or get open either way. 
So he can win with just pure physical ability. It's not always about, hey, we got to put him in this position and let him run this route against this coverage, and then he'll get open. They can just go, hey, just line the f*** up out there. And when you get man, Kurt's coming to you, like period. And that to me is, you know, that's special. That is. So, one, you put him out there, he can run by you for, for a big game. He's phenomenal 50-50 back shoulders. I mean, he's in the conversation for as good as anybody in football. So there we have pure speed and then size, ball adjustment, right, to go do that. He can take the top off defenses on post routes and do all of that as well. And then when you get into all the underneath stuff, the slant returns and all that, he's phenomenal. He is phenomenal. I mean, he is like a very detailed, precise route runner, right? He's not the best with yards after the catch. All right, I'll say that. It's probably like out of the guys we're going to talk about here. And even with Cooper Cup, I think he's probably less than in that department with the ball in his hand. But I think he beats Cooper Cup in the ability just to beat man-to-man pure coverage on the outside. And he beats Cooper Cup in the ability, in my opinion, of like, hey, he's covered or there's two guys on him. Let's just throw it up. And he goes up and gets it anyways. That to me is where Justin Jefferson's really, really damn good. His yards after catch is good. It's not special like those guys, but damn, it's still really damn good. And I think you add that with his size. Again, he's six yeah. three, so he's a little bit taller than Cooper Cup. Uh, and I think, yeah, just as a route runner and without the ball in his hand, he can really separate that way. He's listed as six one. Is he really? Yeah. Mm. Just plays bigger than that. Let's, uh, no, 195. Let's, I'm going to look this up right now. That's Let's just make football. sure. That's on football reference. All right. Well, I've never even heard of that, so that's a problem. What do you mean? Pro football reference? you never uh, heard of that? Oh, yeah, I've heard pro of that. Football. I just left All right. So, pro. wait. Here, yeah. I'm on I'm on NFL Jesus, which is run by the NFL, mm-hmm. and he he's 6'3", 192 on here. All right. So, he's grown two inches since right. uh, pro football <laughs> reference last uh, last measured him. Is that what he came out in the NFL Combine? Let's just uh, just say. I mean, teams don't really lie about height of players. That's not a thing in the NFL. Wow. Vikings roster 6'1", 190. All right. So there he is. NFL Jesus lied to Man, us. Man, well, of I've seen, all sites to like, lie to I've us. I've seen him in person, too, and he just does not seem that size. You know what? Maybe they're sandbagging. Maybe they're like, oh, we can have our you, slot, you know, our nickel guy right, cover him because right. he's only 6'1". Show up on game day, he's 6'3". Wow. Well, well, maybe we'll get to the bottom of that either but, way. But, hey, I can confirm his uh, yards after catch averaged a four and a half this past year. He was like five the year before. So that actually did go down a yeah. little bit. Yeah, yeah, yards after catch. Not, right. Not going in the wrong direction. Well, there. so there's more attention to him. He became that's the true. number one guy there this year officially. You know, I think the year before that, you get the you get the – Hey, he's a rookie. They got Adam Thielen. We're worried about him. So he got a lot of like, you know, easy underneath catches with some space where it wasn't quite that way this year. And especially with Adam Thielen being hurt and having to deal with some injuries there, too. Right. And it still didn't really matter on a week to week basis. Um, yeah, to me, this is definitely one of the best young receivers in the game and no doubt top five in my money. So I don't know your full list, right? But I'm assuming Stefan Diggs is not in your top five. He's not. So when he, when the Vikings let him go, yeah, right, and right. you draft Justin Jefferson, you're like, oh, maybe he can replace him. Hopefully, right. he can't replace Stefan Diggs. Well, turns out here we are two years later yeah. he replaced it and then some. yeah and Diggs is really damn good and he's still really damn good yeah he's not going to make my top five but yeah Jefferson you know again you know I, I think that's the thing is it, it's unique in the fact that you know again he's bigger than a than a, a Stefan Diggs but it's unique in the fact that you can have a skill set again like we talked about where you can just win with your pure, pure physical ability and get open or not be open and still catch the ball but then when you can move into the slot and be like, well, shit, he's one of the better slot receivers in football, too. That, that's a special thing. And, yeah, he's not as explosive as maybe some of these three guys we're going to talk about here in a second and all of that. But he also, I think, in some ways can get open in some routes that those guys can't, too, that, you know, is in his favor as well. But really, really a hell of a receiver, complete receiver. You know, rare blend of a guy that can use everything that a system has to offer and also can just do it with great physical ability, too. And there's probably more he has to offer if he got around. Like, we'll see it this year because he's now, to me, going to be with an offensive coordinator that's going to put more routes on his route tree, hmm. and he's going to be asked to see that. So I think you're going to see a more of a variety of what he's asked to do this year than years past. Numbers have been pretty good. 1,600 yeah. yards last year in a run-first offense yeah. with Delvin Cook there. Right. He was number two in receiving yards. Number three in receiving yards 
was Devontae Adams last year. So we've gone Cup, five for you. We've gone Jefferson, four. Do we have Devontae Adams at three? No, he will not be number three. Okay. I'm sorry. Just, nope. Okay. Um, number three is going to go, I'm going to go with Tyree Kill. Yeah. Oh, he's dropped from one to three. Yeah, he has. He's going to be number three. He's still, you know, amazing. And again, I just think he's still in that conversation for the most explosive receiver in football, the greatest weapon in football. Yes, you know, again, like I said, can he, like, we're going back to the Justin Jefferson, Cooper Cup. Can he run some of those routes the same way? No. When you see him run some of the shorter type routes, precise that way, they're not great always. They're not. You know, you, you run the slant route. Let's just say you run the slant return route, right? I'm just, that's the one I'm using because that's always a precise route. You run a slant, you get to that six yards, you come flat out at six yards, right? You can break out of it. Yeah, you watch like Tyree Kill do it. It never comes out flat. He fades away. He never comes out exactly crisp and clean on the breaks that way with those type of things. So that's where he's not, you know, in the same level as a Justin Jefferson or a Cooper Cup. But I mean, again, you know, I mean, he's uncoverable almost one on one. You know, and again, that's all the other things he does too. Yeah, I mean, go route certainly. Nobody one on one. He can run by anybody. Post routes, we know that. You know, again with the ball in his hands, he's in the conversation for still the best in football when that comes to it. I mean, again, to me, what we saw him do in the Bills game, catch the in cut, and zoom, they're the two guys we're going to talk about in a minute. Are the only other two guys in football that can do that kind of crap. You know, or catch a curl route in the middle of the field, and there's seven guys around him, and we watch him, and we're, we're sitting there watching on a Sunday going, oh, he might get out of this. I mean, nobody does that like he does. It's special, except for maybe the other two guys we're about to talk about. So, you know, that, that's where he's great. His hands are solid. He plays bigger than you expect. He is good at going up and getting balls, 50-50 balles for a guy that's 5'10-ish in that range. He is. His vertical. I mean, I don't His know. His vertical is insane. Got to be right. insane. His hands are the least out of the top five. Nobody catches drops more on target passes than Tyree Kill. I mean, nobody. He just he doesn't always attack the ball. He can let the ball get into his body and pop up in the air. I mean, he cost Patrick Mahomes a handful of interceptions this year. Just balls that hit him in the face, hit him in the hands. He popped up in the air. Uh, so that's where he's not necessarily as good. Yeah, he can't. Even though he's small. I mean, I said he plays big. He's not a guy you can definitively, like, depend on to throw a back shoulder ball to all the time. Like, not to the, the level of, like, we just talked about with Cooper Cup or Justin Jefferson. So those are his weaknesses, you know. So, yeah, you know, but again, I mean, I just – I prefer this type of guy. I do. You know, I'll, I'll, take a, I'll take away some of the other, like we talked about, detailed, nuanced route running for some of the explosive things he can bring to the table. It's going to be fascinating, yeah. right? Just to see how different he looks with a new quarterback and yeah. with Tua now, obviously a step down from from Patrick Mahomes. And um, part of it is too; it, he's twenty eight years old. The last guy, what Justin's twenty three, I think. Still, he's yeah. still super young. Yeah. It, it just illustrates what a young man's game football still is, right? And almost for Tyreek, the fact that he's dropped from. One to three is not a bit. I mean, it just shows you. It's almost like when you get to be the number one player at your position, it's downhill from there. Well, I, th I do think sometimes people rate the guy that's been around for a little while too high. Sure. Just because he's been there and they see stats and whatever else. See, this is to your point. I think. And then we don't give enough credit to go like, no, the guy in year two is actually, this is the best year he's going to have in his life. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's 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 as fast as ever right now. He's as fresh as ever right now. Yeah, don't and, don't don't bank on in five years he'll be even better. Like no, this might right. be, or don't discredit him just because it's like oh, I've sure. only seen him do it one year. Like okay, so what? I don't know. Jerry Rice in year two was the best receiver in football. Randy Moss was the best one in year one. Yeah. After the after four minutes of watching football, everybody in football went, "They're their new best receiver in football with Randy Moss." I don't care who's been here for nine years and had a th ten thousand catches. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I think sometimes people like uh, don't don't um, yeah they don't look at that enough. The young guy coming up the pipe, it's running back is that position too. Uh, but I do think this was the year, and I said this during the season last year. I don't know if it was you or Mike or that the changing the guard at receiver it happened. It had happened like it kind of happened last year. 
but I don't think any longer where like, yeah, the DeAndre Hopkins, the, the AJ Greens, the Julio Jones, they were replaced for the guys that you think are top five receivers in football. Other, the new guys replaced them, in my opinion. Uh, I, I do think that happened last year. Yeah. Mike and- Evans, probably a guy that, you know, 2020 I, I had in top five and for sure is still really damn good, but he's not going to be on this list in the top five. Yeah, I think some of these young young bucks have, have surpassed him a little bit. You think that we're going to be able to see Tyreek make some jaw-dropping plays? Will they get as much out of Tyreek Hill as the Chiefs were able to get out I, of Tyreek Hill? I do think we're going to see jaw-dropping plays. Th- this is where I do wonder, like, we're not going to see as many, uh, you know, bombs down the field in that way. But McDaniel, with what he's learned from Shanahan, I do think we might be able to see Tyree kill in space and intermediate and shorter routes maybe a little bit more often than we did in, in Kansas City. And that, to me, could be dangerous, definitely. You know, and I think if you couple that with a good running game and, oh, we got to worry about Jalen Waddell over here too, you know, that, that yes. You know, I'm not expecting maybe as many, you know, down the field 30 and 40-yard passes, right. but maybe we get a, a bunch of – Eight-yard completions. Oh, crap, though. He's in the middle of the field with nobody around him, and he might be able to make something special happen that way. So Tyreek Hill, not number one, but he is still in your top three. Yeah. Not in your top two. No. Which we're at right now. Top two wide receivers in 2022. Debo Samuel's number two. Wow. Yeah. Debo Samuel, to me, right now, I mean – you know, maybe the best weapon to receiver in football. He might have taken that 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 mantle from Tyree Kill, the guy that I used to go. Oh, it doesn't matter. Just throw him a slant, give him a reverse, just get the ball in his hands. Now, uh, to me, that's Debo Samuel. You know, I think without a doubt, he's the best receiver in football with the ball in his hands. The guy we have at number one rivals him, but where Debo to me. You know, Debo's got a physical nature about him, too. That's different than the rest of the receivers. Debo can run over a strong safety or a linebacker, yep. you know, on a third and four, whether it's a slant route or a toss sweep. Uh, so that, that to me, is, like, special. You know, and, again, a guy that I don't think gets quite enough credit for the route running. You know, I, I don't. I know, like, listen, he might not be Cooper Cup or, or, or Devontae Adams or Justin Jefferson or all that, too. But it's not, like, it's not bad. You know, he's a better route runner, in my opinion, than Tyree Kill, for sure. He is. Now, the, the, the reason I feel like he doesn't get quite the credit, too, sometimes is because they don't throw the ball outside the numbers. So you don't get to see those type of routes with him all the time. He's always running something, screaming over the middle, right? And I don't know, is there a better receiver in traffic in football with people around him? Oh, you're going to get your head knocked off, still catch it and run 100 miles per hour for us? No, there's nobody. And then, you know, a, a receiver where you go, well, this quarterback can't even throw it deep. We know he's going to catch the ball right here in this area, but it doesn't matter. He gets 20 yards every time he f- touches the ball, right? And, you know, breaks tackles. His acceleration is up there with Tyreek and the guy we're going to talk about at number one. Maybe not a top end pure speed. But again, I, I don't know. You know, he's one where I think the stats say a lot for him. You know, uh, you know just 18, point, 18 yards per catch. Yeah, and he, and for 18 yards per catch, probably was getting the most the least amount of air yards through those receptions. You know, it's just screen plays, the toss sweeps, everything about it. Again, to me, that's what a receiver is in the NFL anymore. We're not in the just receivers are only like Jerry Rice mold anymore. It's 2022. We've moved on. It, there's there's more we ask here of the receiver now, and part of being a receiver, in my opinion, is the weapon factor. And Debo Samuel. You know, yes, you can use him in more ways than, than just about anybody in the game right now. And who now. knows, maybe this year you talked about throwing over the I middle know. a lot. I, I mean, think this we'll could see be that. the year where right. Trey Lance, outside the numbers. Outside the numbers. This could be the year you see more 20-yard outs, 15-yard out routes. So you're saying he could look even better. I, he could. He definitely could. And, you know, again, you see the speed to just run by people with pure, like, post routes. And even though, like, you know, his hips – and stuff might be not like the loose like Justin Jefferson. Like where Jefferson and Devontae Adams, they can kind of shake their body and then boom, put their foot in the ground and just come out. And you're like, man, which way are they going here? This is amazing. His is a little different. But it's effective in a lot of ways. So the hips and the loosey-goosiness might not be there. But his ability to like, okay, he's running 4-4. Four, four, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, he's turning it on. He's about to run 4-2. Oh, wait, he put on the brakes, and oh, my God, he restarted, and he's running 4-2 again. That 
is what gets him open and is special. And, yes, even though the hips and all that and I bet be there, his explosion in and out of breaks and can put his foot in the ground and cut that way is what makes him really effective. Part of his value, too, is the uh, how effective he was at running the football. Yes. Sometimes running even between the tackles, you know, running right up the middle. Kyle used him in, in various ways like that. How many rushes did he have well, last and that, year? I've had people go, well, is 59. that? 59. 59, right, right. For what? How many yards? 365 yards. Yeah. I mean, and then, you know, again, that's impressive. When you talk about, oh, he's that tailback and we know he's going to get the ball. But here's the thing. Yeah. You believe reports out there. Yeah. I think Ian Rappaport reported this not that long ago that what he is hearing is that some of the issues that Debo is is having, um, and who knows if this is true or not, is that maybe he doesn't have the desire to do that anymore. We don't know. I mean, who knows if that's true, if that's the real story, if that's the whole story. Yeah. But just take for a fact that, take say it is. Yeah. Say he doesn't want to do that anymore. Yeah. That's a big part of his value, or at least some part of his value. It's a huge part of his value. That's so, what I'm trying to. That's what we're trying to say here. Where would he be on your list if he said, "I don't want to do that anymore"? Well, would he still be in your top five? I think he probably would be still in my top five because he's still going to catch slants and screens and yeah. do all that, and that's really where he makes his money, anyways. You know, again, take away the running plays, it's still a phenomenal year. Sure, it's insane. And like I said, it, it may be being asked to do more with less in a lot of ways than as compared to the other receivers. Hey, catch this ball here and break seven tackles and then turn on the afterburners and run away from everybody for 60 yards. I mean, that's, that's what he does. It's, it's a crazy, crazy skill set he has that way. And that's the point I'm trying to make, too, to you is here is, you know, again, yeah, uh, the, the normal mold of receiver, everybody's got to get out of that receivers now are being asked to do these things. So if you can't do them, to me, you're not as good as a receiver as the guy that can. You know, and that, Don't that, tell me that. Tell Debo that. Well, I know. Tell him so, but Debo, this is, I can understand him having a little bit of a pause about taking that many hits. All right? Mm-hmm. So I could see them maybe going, okay, hey, we're, we, we won't give you the ball as many times a game. He only played seven games in 2020. Right. So he wants to watch himself that way. But. I have a hard time still, like, how many times did we get done with games last year and Shanahan went, it was a third down, and Debo just said, give me the ball. Like, was he not going to do that this year? Like, bullshit. Of course he is. So maybe he doesn't want the ball as less. Maybe he's going to be a little more picky about it. I'm sure Shanahan will, especially when they pay him a lot of money. They're going to want to try to make him last. They're not going to want to kill him, right? They're going to want to get their investment back for that. So I do think it'll be less carries and less car crashes that way, but I still think it's going to be a part of the offense. He and George Kittle, both on the same team. I know. Both of the receivers where when they catch the ball and they have a desire, which yeah. I'm not questioning their desire, but it's the end of the game. They need the big game. It's like those guys seem like two it's of the nasty, hardest right? guys to take down. I agree. In football. Right. They have like, uh, like that desire that want to. You know, right. not just pure physical brute strength, but just a desire. And It is. It and is. It's a fire that burns in them. You're right. There's a will there. And then a, a, a carelessness for their body. That, that I think is what that pushes them over the edge. And, hey, I mean, again, you're talking about it. This is why the 49ers, one of the things I talked about with Florio today is like, it's to me, one of the training camp storylines is, yeah, this quarterback situation, Trey Lance, what he does, all that. I mean, the 49ers are, are really damn good. They're a Super Bowl football team with a quarterback question and conundrum right now. That's rare. It really is. And I mean, you just said it. It's, it's arguably the best tight end in football. You can talk to some people in football and tell you it's the best receiver in football. Brandon Ayuk is no slouch. You got the best left tackle in football with a bunch of other good linemen. You know, you got maybe the best pass rusher, the best middle linebacker. I mean, they're stacked and they have a quarterback issue and some contract issues here, too. So that's it's it is kind of fascinating what's going on in there in in 49er land. So real quick, how do you think it's going to play out here? Because there was a time where he did request a trade, right? Yeah, you're, you're tight with Kyle. Yeah. Give us the inside scoop. Here. Well, I, I just I get the sense, as I've really said from the beginning, right? Again, I saw Kyle this summer, all right? They're not really talk about his football team, right? He's happy with where they are, right? Again, I'm not going to, like, get into specifics about it. He doesn't want to talk that about with me. But as I always said with Kyle, I, Kyle's a master communicator. Players love playing for him. I think you know that by just – because you used to work out there and you you know yeah. people and you hear things. He's just real. He's real. He's a real guy. And the real modern-day player really relates to him that way. And I think he always had confidence. I don't really know what went wrong. I'm not sure if they really know what went wrong. But I think he always had faith that, like, hey, if I just 
keep the communication going with this guy, and he knows who I am. It'll get worked out. It just feels like we're going that way. And I just can't imagine for either side not wanting to make it happen. I mean, I, I know Kyle. I know what kind of players he loves. He loves players like Debo Samuel. He loves them, right? And I, players like Debo Samuel usually love Kyle Shanahan. Because he's just like, you're the man. I'm going to get you the ball every way. You're the man. You're the man. Yeah. Lead our team. Go out on the damn, out of the locker room with the boom backs on your shoulder. Whatever the hell you want. But just keep making plays. And the players love that. Yeah. And I just, that's why I think it's, it's inevitable. Number two wide receiver in football. Yeah. According to Chris Sims. According to Chris Sims. But he's not number one. I know he's not. A, he's, he's definitely in the top ten. Okay. I know that. Because I think Madden didn't have him in the top ten. And oh, that's insane. That what, yeah. yeah. What was it? They had... Uh, yeah, uh, well, yeah, I don't I, exactly they went know. All Maybe. They had yeah. Devontae at a 99. Ooh, yeah, right. they had him as the best wide receiver in football, or I guess they might have had multiple 99s. No, he's the only one, I think. He was the only 99? Yeah. Wow, yeah. he was the only 99. Yeah. Devontae Adams, not even going to make your top five. No, he's not. Okay. He'd make my top ten. All right, we'll he wouldn't in, make my top six. We'll get into your honorable yeah. mentions here in a second. Right. But first, this is the crescendo. Yeah. The crescendo moment. Blah, 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 blah. Number one. D- like... No brainer here for me. It's it's Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is the best receiver in football. It was an easy number one. For it was you. an easy number one. It was one of those where I went, oh, Jamar Chase is definitely top three. And then you go back and watch the year, and you go, um, no, he's one. He's actually one. He is like right there, rivaling the Justin Jefferson and Cooper Cup in the route running department. He's uncoverable one on one. Nobody can cover Jamar Chase one on one. Nobody. Nobody in football. Just ask Jalen Ramsey in the Super Bowl. You know? I mean, again, Jim, I mean, Jamar Chase might be the MVP of the Super Bowl if Aaron Donald doesn't get there on the sack in the, in the end of the game with Jalen Ramsey falling down. He is uncoverable, and he can do it all. So he can run precise routes. Great. Oh, you want to cover him one-on-one? Good night. It's over. He's going to run by you. Touchdown. Oh, you want to play him one-on-one and stop the go route, and they're not even going to change their route, and they're still going to run the go route? Jump ball, back shoulder. It's off the charts good. With the ball in his hands, it rivals Debo. Maybe not the breaking the tackles, but he's faster. He's in the conversation with Tyree Kill as far as pure speed. You know, again, what I will always say is there's just all you got to do is, I mean, again, there's how many people in football can run a 360 slant route and, and crawl over four people and then outrun the whole Ravens defense for an 80 yard touchdown? Or catch a 10 yard out round against the Chiefs who have like three guys in their secondary who run 4 2. Catch it in the middle of the field and all those guys are around him and him just go, None of you can catch me. I'm going to outrun every one of you. Zoom, even though you had the head start. And he's amazing that way. He can break tackles. I think we're going to see more of the weapon stuff. I think you'll see more tosses and reverses as we go along here. But, yeah, for my money, it's the best receiver in football. He ended it that way, and I think it's only going to get better. So we should all remember, because I think the big story in training camp last year was yeah. how he had drops. Right. Right? It was right. Like, uh-oh. Right. Maybe he took the year off. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's a little rusty. Kind of like we took five weeks off. Maybe we're a little rusty. Um, what's going on? He, they should not have taken him number five. I was looking at the draft now because at the time the argument um, was was where should where should he go? How high yeah. should he go? Right, right. Penny Sewell should the Bengals take him? Exactly, Penny Sewell. That was the big one. The yeah. Lions, you know, they got Penny Sewell at seven. Jamar Chase went at five. You say he's the number one wide receiver in football right now. Yeah. I think a lot of people would agree with you, except for Madden, as you mentioned. Right? <laughs> Wasn't he one of the? He's one like of the eleven or twelve. On, crazy. Um, it went Trevor Lawrence, it went Zach Wilson, it went Trey Lance, it went Kyle Pitts, it went Jamar Chase. <laughs> Knowing what you know now, how high would you reasonably take Jamar Chase? Well, it's always hard with the quarterback conversation. I know. I know. But, yeah, that type of talent, to your point, You'd I know what you're saying. You have to think about it. Like, if you're Jacksonville, like, I don't know. You need that franchise quarterback. I get it. I get it. But, man, if you, uh, you're talking number one wide well, receiver in football. If you – right. If you had – your franchise quarterback, or it's a, let's just say it's a draft that there's that guy's not there, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I guess what we're basically saying is like, you know, is a guy like Jamar Chase and that talent worthy of a top two or three pick? Yeah, I do. I think so. You know, in this day and age in the NFL, I, I do. I mean, again, he's he changed their football team. I know Joe Burrow special too, but again, this is where not only are the stats eye popping and wow and yards per catch and all the touchdowns and everything there, but 
what I would really love to show people is just go, man, come in here and watch and just watch like this game here and where this defense had to change the way they were playing and the coverages they were, they had to change it because they just said, we, we can't do it anymore. We, we can't do this to our corner. He's got no chance against Jamar Chase one-on-one. -on -one. And, and then Tyler Boyd or, you know, T Higgins get the catch and we take away the credit from from the guy like Jamar Chase at the end of the game and go, well, he only had four catches today. Well, right. yeah, they, you know, they yeah. played a defense that was all about that. Where you know, there's other guys here on the list again where I could sit here and, and just go, hey, these guys are good. That's right. But they, they, yeah, they had seven catches and they had 70 yards, but they didn't have the effect of the game that Jamar Chase did with his three catches for 55 yards. You know, they this guy had the seven catches for 70 yards, but they played a man the whole game. They never did anything special to cover him that way. And if Jamar Chase got played that way, it would have been 14 for 300 yards. So that's where like people lose sight of that. And that's where the numbers can lie a little bit, too, at times at the position. But yeah, for my money, Jamar Chase and Debo Samuel are definitely the top two receivers in football. And Jamar Chase uh, is, is the man right now. Think of that team back at LSU. Right. Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Joe Burrow. Yeah. I know. It's insane. <laughs> I mean, what was Joe Burrow in Clyde your... Edwards Alaire. Where did you, you have Joe Burrow? It was he I had him four... one. Oh, this year four, right? Four, yeah. right? Four, He's yeah. f number four quarterback in the NFL. In the NFL. And you've got a number four wide receiver in the NFL. Right. And the number one wide receiver in the NFL. Yeah. All on that college team. It's insane. It really is. It really, I mean, of course, we know that was one of the best teams ever. And that's, that's one still. You know, the funniest thing I'll always remember about that team. Well, it just... I don't even know why I'm going there. I was just going to say the the one thing I always remember is people killing the corner from Atlanta, AJ Terrell. Oh yes, because he because Jamar Chase <laughs> yeah. caught three touchdowns on him, yeah. and he was all over him. Yeah, and I wanted to be like, damn, he covered him as good as anybody I've seen cover him in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. He caught three touchdowns. One was like a push off. The other one, they kind of tangled feet and he tripped and fell. But I remember NFL evaluators going, well, I know, but man, he had a tough day that day against LSU. Now I want to be like, this guy's like freak show the receiver and he was with them the whole game right right so uh and he's awesome as is proven it'll be, to be easier for him once he gets to the nfl well well i mean that's you know sometimes you got to <laughs> evaluate who they're going against and and what it's like there but yeah phenomenal football player and i think what you see too a little bit at least with my top three yeah and i think this is the trend that's going on in the nfl and it's going to continue i see it even in high school right now going to camps and stuff over the last few weeks Kids that are built like running backs that go, I'm not playing running back. I'm playing receiver. Like, well, mm -hmm. why would I play running back? Get me out in space. Get me out in space. Why would I get killed like that? I'm only going to get one contract. Like, these kids are going, no, the hell with that. Get me. Let me be a receiver. I can play 12 years, 14 years, and I'll still be able to walk and be good when I'm 52, and I'm going to make a ton more money and have every bit of effect on the football game. And I think that's what you're seeing with these guys. Chase Samuel and Hill are built like running backs. Hmm. They really are. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.